What's going on guys, TTRX6 here, back for another third party review, and today we're taking a look at X-Transbot's uh, Boost and Hatch, otherwise known as Wind Charger and Tailgate. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they are uh, two Trans Ams. I believe they are like uh, somewhere around 89 or 90 if I recall right. I think 91 and 92 had more like weird curved front ends. Uh, I've always been a fan of this particular vehicle, so I was pretty excited to see uh, you know, a Trans Am getting an actual Transformer, which is nice because in the comics they were like, or in the cartoon, the original toy, they were like an 83 or something like that. So yeah, pretty exciting to see these guys coming out. Um, that said, I am not amongst the crowd that thinks that this is X-Transbots turning the corner. Uh, there is definitely some glaring issues here. And it all comes down to the way everything is toleranced, and it is prevalent in all modes in the alt mode in the uh, the transformation like you just can see it and like see this gap here like it's supposed to sit up more like that like you can see it's this black piece here that needs to pull back and this needs to swing in but it just never does it for me um, it doesn't matter if I adjust this and try to bring it back again um, these pieces just don't clip in in such a way that this gap disappears so it just doesn't look right to me um, I don't know if you guys are out there and you know that I'm doing something wrong feel free to chime in but as far as I see uh, I've transformed this a handful of times and every single time it's ended up just like this uh, because it doesn't peg in properly in proper locations um, another thing may not be clear but uh, you got multiple different colors of red going on and I don't really understand why I feel like they should just cast this in the same red they did with everything else and painted this black and the black paint on there is just not well done uh, the front of the car is fine uh, props for the little uh, attempt at the Pontiac logo on the rims there with the silver that looks nice coming around to the back you got the bird uh, colored but you missed the fact that the real Trans Am uh, of these years, these were always blacked out. Uh, so that looks bad. On uh, Tailgate here, again, it's red, which I guess is okay. They put some effort into it, but it would have been better if it was blacked out. Uh, which they could have done because they've used black throughout it. Uh, spotty Pontiac logos this time, not present on every single wheel this time. And a big glaring difference in the whites on the door. Once again, bubbly paint where the black is, and then this is just atrociously bad coloring. Uh, they really should just cast this in white. Now, you can see that they did do remolds on the hood here. You kind of got like um, like a power bulge versus like, a, it almost looks sort of like a cowl induction. It's not, not quite big enough, but uh, definitely goes through the whole hood. Uh, yeah, so I'm surprised that they did any remolding on it, frankly. I just noticed <laughs> they actually have the gas tank on this side and this side. So this is one of those rare dual gas tanked uh, Trans Ams that never ever existed. Anyway, I mean, it's nice the little details they did, the handles and the, the door locks. That should have been black on the car if that's the proper color. But whatever, they put it on extra detail. It's nice. The paint's pretty good for what they did uh, but I wish they spent more time making all this stuff fit properly um, you can say all you, you can saw the weapon storage here is pretty simplistic it just kind of pegs in here and then you close this up and it doesn't hold in any meaningful way it just can slip right out so it's terrible and this one here just kind of you jam it in between the wheel well and the plastic here to hold it in so that at least works same thing for this, nothing good, just kind of will flip on out uh, when you're not ready for it. Now before we go on, I will point out the extra things because we're not going to talk about them again. Uh, hatch slash tailgate comes with an alternate chest piece if you like the more G1 tech look. There you go, you've got that option. Uh, I don't believe it's pinned on, I think it just clips on so it's nice and easy. And then you've got a little set of eyes here that... Well, there it is right there. You'd open it up and you just slide them through and that gives the toy looking face. And for boost, you've got an alternate uh, head and I guess a back piece to the head based on how 
the mask has to hold in uh, to give him a toy accurate face. Again, not things that I'm going to use, but cool that they threw them in there if that's something that you're interested in. So let's get some size comparisons here. Uh, disappointingly, if you put them next to a regular Masterpiece car, they are extraordinarily tiny, and Lamborghinis are fairly wide cars, but uh, that is just abysmally small comparatively. The Trans Am is nowhere near that small when compared to a, a Lamborghini. However, when you bring out something like Bumblebee, I don't know, somehow it starts feeling a little bit better, uh, but the size is still totally off. Um, if you're into the alt modes, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, you know, if you're scaling of alt modes, I should say. And just for comparison, here's Bad Cube's uh, Outback, which I would like to see Bad Cube actually make a run at these guys. I think they could do a pretty good job. So we start by unpegging this, and be careful, like lift it up, because I've seen these already snapped on some people's. And you can go ahead and disconnect the back here too and open these on out just like so oh one other thing I forgot to point out they do have tail or headlights that pop up on here uh, and this is also a fit and finish thing as you can see uh, if I put it upside down one falls out the other one doesn't so it ends up looking like a Trans Am with a uh, messed up uh, motor gear on those headlights and uh, yeah, so one is consequently up and one is down. If you're someone who lived in the 80s and 90s, you probably saw that fairly frequently. And I will say that Boost holds his headlights pretty good. Uh, hatch, on the other hand, uh, pretty much as soon as I flip it over, that goes back. That's not saying I can't get it to stay, but I usually have to hold it and very gently place it on the desk and hope for the best. Um, I've tried taking it apart. There is no way to tighten it up. So it just ends up looking bad. Uh, neat feature, but the fact that it's so poorly implemented means that I couldn't really possibly care less about it. Uh, I could care less? No, I couldn't. I think that's the right way. I think I got called out on that one before by someone. Anyway, take this and just kind of undo this like this. Uh, take this chest piece, and they tell you to do it later. Do it now. Uh, and then take these wheels and kind of rotate them in like this. And this is not pleasant because you can see I'm rotating it and nothing is changing. So what you need to do also is disconnect. Try to disconnect these arm pieces from this piece of molding here on each side and this is one of those cases where it's like this was made unnecessarily complicated for who knows what reason like there's really no benefit to how x transbots did this like why did this need to lock in here it didn't it flat out didn't you could have done that as a separate piece and no problem because that's a piece that's eventually gonna break off at some point um, yeah you know I'm real tempted to to real carefully cut this off and just glue it into this piece so I can just rotate it out because not only does it lock in here but it locks into this little hip skirt piece here so it's entirely unnecessary I, I, I don't understand why X Transbots made it this complicated uh, especially given their lack of ability to make something with good material so anyway I'll try to get this unpegged again over here without damaging the top of the car I think we've got it mostly there we go it's also locked in back here and all these pieces lock it in up here unnecessary completely unnecessary so anyway now that we have these free we can rotate these guys right on around so now to come to the back here we're gonna take this part of the car, swing it on up, fold these mirrors in, or mirrors, the windows in, which is going to let you untab this and bring it uh, up like this. Now you can take these, unfold them, and bring this thing down and tuck it in like that. And we'll come back to that in a second. So we got this mess here. 
Um, we're gonna open this, take this little face flap, which is only there to hide his face in vehicle mode. We could have just turned his head around completely unnecessary yet again. You could have done something different. Come back to this piece here. Fold this red hood piece down like that so it's 90 degrees and then fold this back. Uh, if you do it in the wrong order you're gonna stress the heck out of all this stuff up here. Um, I don't know if you can see it but those inside sockets are already starting to stress on mine. Um, it's just not possible to go in a different order. Yeah, and see this is where you can see there's nothing preventing the car from going in there's not any piece in the way or anything like that it just doesn't work I don't know let's see if I turn it this way is that gonna help it work better no that that makes it actually worse so yeah anyway that folds back like this and you're gonna take this piece here and fold it up and then these two little black pieces here will grab the uh, little air dam of the hood so these can come around here, you see we've got his head. Uh, we're going to flip these so you have slots on the wheels here on each side and get these little blue pieces out because they're super easy to forget. So take these like that and now this can lock in just like so on here if you did it right and it's not a very secure connection nope nope I mean I understand what you're going for but that was it's it's a stupid design it's absurdly dumb the way that this was done to try to lock these in place in a way that really doesn't work. So once you have that anyway, you can take these in to fill in the uh, panels here. And we come to the legs and the arms, which are the dreaded thing. Uh, again, it's terrible. So you're going to take these, you're going to fold this open, fold the finger like this, and then you take the hand and it is going to cost, uh, have a little bit of forcing because the way things are toleranced here, uh, if the hand was a little bit shorter or this piece was a little shorter, you wouldn't have to pop it past that piece and then rotate this down and around. And once you have that, it's going to be like this. And once again, the hand is stuck, so you have to kind of wiggle it all past all this stuff. And then, only then, can you take this, fold that in, and close this. And you got a hand. So let's do that on the other side. Open the hand, flip this around. Pop it past this stuff, flip it around, flip this around, push this in, pop this past all that stuff, and close it up. And we got his hands, and in the process we messed up the wheels on the chest. Which will never cooperate properly with me, so that's how it is. Coming down to the legs here. Uh, this one is also a pain. Take these guys and bring them out like this. Uh, the biggest revelation for me is when I found out that, well first off, you want to get this to disconnect from all of this stuff. And then this little piece here will move around like this to help you move it and then this slides in. Once you have this like this, then it becomes another issue where everything is in the way again. And you're going to rotate this around, just like so, and keep kind of rotating it and adjusting everything so it's out of the way. And that's probably the smoothest it's ever gone for me. Take this little red piece, slide it all the way down to fill in a needless part of the foot. Rotate the wheel around. And then take this piece, it's going to become your heel spur. This back piece kind of pulls back out again and then there is a hole right here and you're gonna try the best you can to get it to clip in and it's probably not gonna hold in very well 
uh, but it should be good enough to call the foot done and we'll just rotate the leg around this way for aesthetic purposes so let's try that again I'm sure it's not gonna go nearly as smooth uh, pop all this stuff out of position here come on you there we go just like that rotate this piece on up try to get it out of the way rotate all this stuff around like that and rotate this thing up that's going to hopefully let us clear all this stuff as we continue the rotation bring this red piece down bring this up and pull that out and plug it in and there we go we'll flip the leg put the knee back in kind of what looks like a workable position and one last time we'll come back through and try to get these lined up with these incredibly tiny holes like if this tab was bigger it would work but it's not so it doesn't work there we go I think it's mostly in there we're gonna take him up oh, we forgot to put his one wheel in place I thought that one leg went just way too easy there we go wheels in place and we've got wind charger in his robot mode just like so and just like that there we go looking not too bad so to show you how absurdly amazing these guys are here is a pin that I am not sure exactly where it's from and in the process of doing just this much on uh, tailgate here it has fallen off some undeterminable area. Yeah, I really don't see it. So I'm going to put this right back here as a reminder. And then when you get to this piece, uh, you get these real scary pieces and you rotate that back and then you rotate this, uh, which I, again, won't know if you can see, but these hinges here are stressing real badly on mine on both sides here. Okay, so as we went through the rest of the transformation, I managed to figure out where the pin went. See this pin here? See this pin here? How about this pin on this side? Oh man, it's missing on that side. I don't even know how that came out like that. Nor how I'm going to get it back in. Uh, shoddy. Completely shoddy. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to show you on how I do this guy differently is, because if you notice, his head here will just disconnect his chest when you try to move it and I think in, it's intended uh, because it's on its own ball joint that really that's all the movement you're going to use out of this but I think that's dumb uh, if you're going to do that yeah it just doesn't look good so what I do here is you can actually slide this little piece come on you can do it did I do it yeah there we go so it slides back like this uh, you can see like the channel in there so I think it's supposed to and the instructions never tell you it but you just kind of take this and you push the whole assembly back and then once you get this all connected together properly if you can call it that these little chest tabs just kill me this whole thing kills me. Anyway, we've got it in position now, how it's supposed to be, and you can turn this thing around without these ever bumping the chest. So anyway, I've taken Hatch here and I've given him his pistol. Uh, it's just as easy as it always is with every MP. You open the fingers and you put this in at an angle and then twist it in so the little tabs hold it and they do a pretty decent job holding their gun um, yeah can't get the grip all the way closed oh you can on 
Now it did. First time I did, I must have had something wrong because it was just kind of popping out. But he holds his gun like a champ. If you want to give him the little electromagnet thing, um, notably, not for this hand. Nope. You gotta put it in the left hand so you can cover up the fact that his fingers are still showing like that. But yeah, that's how it looks. Uh, for comparison, here he is next to G1 Bumblebee, and at least I can give them the uh, enjoyment of saying that, you know, Bumblebee is the smallest uh, mini bot. Here we go, Bumblebee. And uh, these guys don't intrude on that being the smallest. Uh, they do look nice next to Bumblebee here. Uh, here is Bad Cube's Brawny, a much bigger vehicle than these guys who ends up looking pretty nice. Uh, an MP car. Let's keep keep going out here so we can kind of get the full effect here. <coughs> That's the prowl mold and of course here's the uh, red alert slash side swipe mold. And then finally uh, MP Optimus. And I gotta say like you know they look pretty good when they're with Optimus. I will give them credit for their robot modes which is in my opinion if you get these guys exactly what I think you should do with them so let's talk a little bit about articulation and then let's get out of here uh, for boost here his head is on a swivel pin here and then the swivel side to side uh, just real quick as it differentiates for hatch uh, again you do have the swivel up and down on the head inside here and uh, it can go side to side in there, but it is just easier to turn the whole head bucket. Uh, and in this case, if you do the pop back trick, it won't actually hit the uh, chest there. Uh, coming to the arms here, it's on a ball joint here and a hinge here, so pretty good range of motion out of there. Uh, not getting a full T or anything, but good enough. Bicep swivel, elbow joint gets you all you need. Uh, rotating wrist and the fingers which are fine uh, the hips here look terrible I mean I guess really it's not meant for any more than just a little bit of movement on the hips otherwise it just it looks awful just plain awful <laughs> um, but that's okay for a natural stance really something like that's probably all you need and uh, yeah and for that case it looks fine uh, coming down to the legs here, uh, you do have these little side hip skirts here to get the complete split. Um, the whole hip joint at the side skirt rotates here. Uh, no ratchets, a thigh swivel, uh, this knee, which I, I don't know, it works fine, it gets you 90, but I really don't like how this was created, this double jointed thing, um, I don't feel that most of the time it looks or works good yeah and then uh, of course if you are okay with the fact that these tabs don't work properly uh, you can of course get him you know handcuffed in front or something like that with the shoulders kind of slumped in not really what's intended but since the tabs don't work who cares about what's intended uh, coming down to the foot here uh, you do have the rotation of this piece and the rotation of this piece to help kind of give them a little ankle rotation but don't be surprised if everything starts coming undone in the process and you do have die cast on the black uh, vented window uh, louvers I should say and uh, this piece here I believe is also die cast uh, so you will see routinely my do tend to upon moving just kind of fall down so that's it. That's the articulation. If that works for you, then I'm happy for you. Uh, you'll enjoy this guy. I will say for the robot modes, they are nice. The alt modes look mostly nice with the exception of the gaps. The transformation's not fun and things just don't really fit right. So let's get this guy transformed back and let's get out of here. Uh, I'm going to start by disconnecting the chest and moving these blue pieces as far as inward as I possibly can like that then we're going to well, we'll come down to the legs we'll rotate the legs backwards uh, disconnect this bring the red piece up just like so slide this in slide this up 
and we'll try to rotate, whoops, let's take the wheel here and get it out of the way too, because it usually tends to help, and we'll rotate this all around, and past everything, come on, you can do it, there we go, and there is one side, and we take this, bring this up into place, and make sure that this panel is all the way slid out as far as it can and there is like a hole here to accept the part that was pegged in here and basically you just kind of want to work all this stuff into position until this back piece kind of clips in like this and then that's how you'll know everything else can lock in just like so and that's one foot accomplished Let's try again the other side, bring this in, rotate it up, rotate this to the side so we can bring this panel that is unnecessary around, bring this wheel around, and when I say it's unnecessary, someone's going to say, well, it's a nice attention to detail that fills in the leg, but really it's unnecessary because in most cases you're not going to see it and it really doesn't hide things very well, so uh, that's what I mean by unnecessary. Anyway, we have this, flip this on around, if we can, come on, there we go, don't get stuck now, there we go, just like that, bring this thing over and up, try to get this all to line up here, and that clips in place, which means we can clip this in place which means we can now take these and kind of clip them together and we're pretty much done we're just gonna close them you saw how the weapon storage works if that's what you want to do you know how to do it so we got that now we're going to open up his chest here uh, disconnect the roof from the front of the car just like so Take this piece and telescope it straight in there. It's kind of a hard joint to see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. There it is. See that double piece? Make sure that that is straight down, which gives the most distance between uh, the torso and the front of the car. Just like that. We'll take this piece here, get these arms out of the way, rotate the uh, front of the car like that and then rotate it down past his big bulbous head and hope that everything all plugs in on the top here <gasps> it actually clipped in a way I've never heard it clip before so I think we actually are gonna have the front of the car all uh, lined up either that or it just broke <laughs> I don't know anyway we'll take this piece here and close this up it's looking good though. I'm going to say that actually looks better than I've ever seen it even out of the box. Maybe something finally gave. Anyway, take the uh, roof and trunk of the car, kind of line that up like this, and then everything is basically in position to try to work this arm mess out. So let's open up the hands here on the arm. We're going to Take this, slide it like that, get it past this piece, like so, bring it around, and flip it on in and close it up, just like that. And then this piece can telescope out like this, and we'll do it again for the other side. So bring this around, like so. Get this piece to go around there, again, I wish they did that better, flip this around and do this. On the positive note, it's wearing itself away, so at some point it probably will be fairly easy. Telescope this piece on out here. Which I'm not even sure if you need to telescope these out, they might just end up happening when you put it back in its vehicle mode. There we go. 
So we got that like this. Uh, again, I don't plug any of this stuff in because I think it's more useful to try to finish that after you've got this done. So take this, rotate it around, and get it so it fits in here, which is a struggle. Bring this up, like so, and we should be able to plug, as you can see here, with this out of the way, you can see it, see how it plugged right into there? That's exactly what we want it to do. Like so. And something doesn't seem like it's working out right. No, I think we're still okay. Plug that in, just like that. Let's do that again for the other side. And I think everything will all come together when we finish up. Bring this around and bring this up like this. So it fights all these pieces. Now we'll take uh, this hood assembly, kind of bring it around here, which will automatically kind of pop it in place here, which will lock the back piece here. And we'll just make sure the other side is all lined up just the same. There we go. Everything should be all plugged in there. And then from here, we just kind of clip the back of the car together, just like so. And we have everything done except the chest, which should just go up here. And you can see the two sides of the chest should fit between the arms and the body, just like so. And it's back in vehicle mode, and holy crap, the gap is gone. Uh, again, not sure if something finally like stressed out right. Um, hopefully when we put them back into robot mode and put them on the shelf, something didn't break. But, you know, now that it's like that, that's pretty darn impressive looking, aside from the color differences. Pretty nice. So yeah, this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, honestly, if these guys announce it, I hope everybody jumps ship on these or abandons uh, the urge to buy it. I really don't think x Transbots has improved with this guy. I do think Arcos is a better purchase. Um, but frankly, we need wind charger and tailgates for our uh, MP uh, G1 shelf, and nobody else has done it in a way that really fits. I mean, there was a Make Toys uh, tailgate, but it's really just not the same thing The Cybertronian mode for, you know, Earth based vehicle G1. So this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Leave it in the comments if you have these guys and, you know, tell me what you guys think of them. And uh, if you know any tips or tricks that uh, maybe makes transforming this piece is easier for me because you can see it was quite the struggle and they're eating the parts. I don't know. I'm always good for uh, trying to get more tips on how to get these guys transformed efficiently. So I'll see you guys on the next review.